everybody. Welcome to Rachel's Reviews. We are really excited to talk about the ending of the Skywalker saga. We started this podcast when uh, Force Awakens was coming out for that first year, and uh, we reviewed all the Star Wars movies, and now we're here at the end of this trilogy, and uh, so I'm excited to talk it out, this last movie, uh, The Rise of Skywalker, and I am film critic Rachel Wagner, and uh, Abby's here. Hi. Yes. And Jeremy's here. Hello. Yes. So <laughs> how are you guys feeling going into this movie? Because I can tell you for me, I was going in with pretty low expectations. <laughs> I, I wasn't a big fan of The Last Jedi. The more I thought about it, the more I didn't like it. And <laughs> I started not really loving it. And, uh, and I, I just didn't love the trailers and I just had pretty low expectations for this one. Um, so, but you know, it's Star Wars, so I'm always going to be optimistic. Uh, but Abby, how did you feel going into it? Um, I was pretty excited about it. I mean, I didn't have the same, I didn't love the last Jedi, but I didn't have the same, like, distaste for it that you did. Mm -hmm. Um, it's not a movie I'm going to watch over and over or anything, but I I really liked The Force Awakens. Yeah. So I I felt optimistic that J.J. Abrams was going to do something good to finish it off. Mm-hmm. And what did you think, Jeremy? So I was going in um, pretty excited. Um, Force Awakens is my favorite Star Wars movie. Last Jedi surprisingly came in as number three. Uh, for me like I I really enjoyed it I know uh, Ryan Johnson went off in a completely different direction than maybe JJ intended Um, I think uh, so anyway I was really excited going into this one Um, probably my biggest thing is it it maybe uh, doesn't lack or doesn't have as much cohesion as a trilogy um, because of the the uh, different direction in uh, the last jedi Mm -hmm. but uh overall like i really really enjoyed um all three movies and i was really excited coming into this one Mm -hmm. abby what do you think what's your overall take on the movie i enjoyed it it was fun yeah yeah i enjoyed it too i thought it was pretty messy (laughs) <laughs> and we'll talk about that and some of the things I thought were messy uh, and uh, with just more characters than I knew what to do with and uh, and just so many plot points. And uh, in that way, it did kind of remind me of the uh, the the last um, Fantastic Beast movie. But in this case, I do think this was way more fun than that movie. And, uh, and I just liked it way better <laughs> maybe that's partly because i like star wars way better than harry potter uh but i just kept adding more and more and more plot points and for a final movie in a trilogy that's hard to to deal with because you're also trying to close all these plot points at the same time so you're adding and then you're closing uh so it was a messy movie but overall i thought it got back to that spirit of adventure which is what i like in star wars uh, i've always uh, been more into that uh into that uh good guys facing off with the bad guys and you go on an adventure with them that's the core of what kind of draws me to the series and a lot of that other stuff more philosophic stuff isn't as interesting isn't as isn't as compelling for me uh as a as a star wars fan so i kind of feel like to go off your point jeremy i kind of feel like you could easily not see the last jedi and just see The Force Awakens and this, I mean, I felt like it did away with a ton of what they did in The Last Jedi. And which uh, is not only, they're very totally different, but I just felt like almost every sort of, I guess, bold choice that the movie made was basically forgotten in this movie. I mean, they got rid of, they hardly used Rose at all, which everybody, uh, not everybody, but a lot of people didn't <laughs> like her in The Last Jedi. They, uh, they, uh, they basically, they literally have Luke apologize for his behavior in The Last Jedi. And there's a, even a, a, a moment where they're basically, I felt like it was JJ just completely trolling Ryan Johnson. Uh, with the uh, with the line about the lightsaber, and uh, and I don't know, just almost everything. I felt like that was sort of significant. The only major thing that happens in the Last Jedi that continues on into this movie is the death of Snoke. 
everything everything else is like the Ray's origin is retconned like almost everything that was kind of a big deal I feel like you you it was either kind of smoothed over or it was uh or it was eliminated in some way I don't know yeah it's interesting because again I feel like you you had the uh um Force Awakens had a really strong opening um and they kind of hand off that lightsaber and then um the first thing that happens in last jedi is they toss it away and i think both directors just kind of did that with uh last jedi you kind of tossed out what happened in the first one and kind of did your own thing and then Mm -hmm. um back in uh uh, rise of skywalker you kind of have the same thing going on where we just say uh you know what forget all that we're back on where i you know where i was going before um i actually felt like the um Ray as a Palpatine, um, that actually felt so. Again, if there's any retconning, I think it's just kind of drawing back to what JJ's intention was in Force Awakens. Yeah. Um, as you know, so it's not like going, uh, reaching too far because I actually felt like Ray as a Palpatine made a lot of sense based on Force Awakens. Mm-hmm. But again, you know, you have kind of that sidestep in Last Jedi, and that's kind of what Last Jedi is going to feel like overall from all this is it's mm-hmm. it's a giant sidestep in a lot of ways. Yeah, and I feel like you could just tell that there wasn't a uh, a leader like you have in, say, in Kevin Feige in the MCU who is guiding that whole series so that it all fits and links together. There's very few. I mean, yeah, in Endgame, you had to have some time travel to make everything kind of work. But uh, but for the most part, those there is a you can tell there is a, a planner who's planning that series and i don't i feel i felt like for a long time with star wars that there has been somebody who's just flinging stuff at the wall hoping things will stick Mm -hmm. you know whether it's uh we're gonna try to do the solo thing uh whether it's uh, you know and they start with lord and miller and then it becomes ron howard and then you know they're just like well we'll figure something will work and um (laughs) and and then same thing with rogue one Oh, we're going to make it a war movie. But then evidently they didn't like that. It was too violent or whatever the reason they had to do a last minute script rewrite. And uh, I mean, it's amazing that film is, is as good as it is. Uh, And with all the changes and, you know, they've had Josh Trank in for a little while and then they decided to go away from him and they had Colin Trevorrow and they decided to go away from him. And I, I just, I think that there's just a real, a real deciding lack of kind of leader who has a vision and you can definitely see that here now in this trilogy and i do think it hurts the overall sort of legacy of this trilogy like i think you can have fun with all of the movies and there's good things about all of them but i don't see this one this is a series that we're going to be talking about in 20 years as this great uh as this great movie series yeah i just wish they had um, you know, for example, if it had just been J.J. Abrams for all three movies, I think you would have uh, a great story. But I think, uh, again, if they're going to continue with trilogies, I feel like they need to, um, like you said, kind of map out that story, um, at least have the bones of it in place for all three and say, this is what we're going to stick with, regardless of who's directing yeah. in the middle. But I feel like if if it had been J.J. all the way through, we'd be great. You know, there there've been um, news reports about Ryan Johnson trilogy, um, on again, off again, on again. Um, I'd have no problem with that, even though Last Jedi did feel like it was a giant sidestep. I enjoyed the movie, and I mm-hmm. think if he had three movies to work with, um, he would do fine. Um, so I I just feel like again, um, mm-hmm. kind of having that uh, uh, discontinuity in the middle just didn't help. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I would have thought that like. If we're gonna be if we're gonna be getting hints in the first movie about Ray's origin, then her origin should be known already by whoever's writing the movie, right? Mm-hmm. But that is apparently not the case. I right? from what I've heard her origin is that, story seems to be flopping around. Yeah, from what I've heard is that that the the uh, studio had the president of Luke's film Kathleen Kennedy that she gave uh, Ryan Johnson a lot of freedom when it came to story and uh, and yeah that he uh, he wanted to uh, subvert expectations and that was a big goal of his 
And the problem with subverting expectations, and that's fine, but you have to replace it with something that's like equally satisfactory. And, and JJ claims in many interviews that, oh, we were totally on the same page. This is totally what I had planned. And I'm sorry, there's no way that's true. It's just, there's no way. That that's no, true. I agree with you. There's no way that's true because things would have been handled very differently if it was. Yeah, like a good example of sort of maybe subverting expectations a little bit is something like Thor Ragnarok, which the previous two Thor movies had been uh, had been more epic in nature, more classical sort of mythology kind of a feeling. And then Thor Ragnarok comes and it's, it's this sort of modern, uh, more comedic feel to the kind of thing, but nothing really in Thor Ragnarok really... Uh, aside from just just style, but nothing in the actual plot hurt anything in the other two movies, really. It was just a style change. And so that, and that is enough to kind of subvert your expectations a little bit. Uh, but uh, but just, just saying, taking the, the, the box of questions, because you know that JJ loves this mystery box idea and you know, the way it kind of dra- draws you in, just taking his mystery box and just kind of saying, nope, nope, no, 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 no. <laughs> and then passing it on to him again, uh, then it, it, it's it just... It put Abrams worked. in the position of having to kind of retell the story. Yeah. The way he had always intended for it to be told and tie up all these loose ends. Yeah, like and that's that would- why I say, I don't even think you would necessarily need to watch The Last Jedi uh, right. that... Uh, that I feel like that JJ tried to combine his what he wanted to do for a second movie and a third movie in one movie, and it's yeah. fun because I think he makes fun films. He makes energetic, exciting mm-hmm. films that move along, and uh, and but it did feel rushed and it did feel like a lot of ideas in one movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think yeah. the only thing that you need to cover is uh, put in the opening crawl that Snoke was killed. Yeah. And then you're you're there. Yeah. In fact, I like I have I have a couple friends who were super into the Last Jedi, and and frankly, I don't really understand how they can not be annoyed by this. <laughs> like, I understand if somebody was just like, oh, it, was, it was a pretty good film. I liked it. That's fine. You know, whatever. But like, I would be really ticked off if I was a hardcore Last Jedi defender, and then this happened. I would be really irritated. <laughs> I mean, that's just my personality. But I feel like you just undid this whole movie. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, I can see that. Definitely. Yeah. But <laughs> you you look at the trilogy and, and uh, I, I look at the way the, the original trilogy was done. And in Empire, you have the great reveal of Darth Vader as Luke's father. And I think that, again, the second movie would have been the opportunity to reveal Ray's parentage and it would have felt a natural progression of the story having to reveal it in the third one and then oh by the way he's he's the villain too and here you go um it just again like you said felt very rushed yeah so the movie starts out with them looking for this wayfinder the sith wayfinder and uh, they're trying to find where palpatine is on the planet exegol and uh, this was totally kind of a MacGuffin plot. They sort of had two MacGuffins. They had this, uh, they had this Wayfinder. And then they had this dagger. There's sort of the two kind of uh, you know, tools that would lead them to, uh, to wherever. And it did remind me a lot, as a Rebels fan, uh, the Wayfinder reminded me a lot of, uh, I, I'm not sure if you even had the same name, I can't remember. But in the Jedi Temple in Rebels, they had a very similar type of artifact or whatever that uh that they were all the the darth maul and all the other characters were all looking for for the power and uh and so the uh that was fine for me i don't care about that kind of thing i think that's fine Uh, if it gets the plot moving and going i think uh, it worked it worked well uh for me and uh and so um, and then uh, we, yeah, we find out that Palpatine has returned. So, Abby, do you agree with Jeremy that you liked that 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 change, or would you rather had uh, Ray stay as a, a nobody? I really don't care. Like, <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, having Palpatine 
sort of like, I don't know, he has this sort of like Voldemort-esque return from the grave yeah. kind of situation. Uh, I think there was value in that, and it led to like a cool ending and an interesting... Um, it led Ray to an interesting like internal conflict similar to what Luke faced. Um, it gives us that echo of the previous series. Mm -hmm. Um, I saw one person on Twitter who felt like it kind of erased the feminism in Ray's character because she got her power from a man. But, um, I don't necessarily agree with that. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. I think the way I think the way it played out was fine. I think it could have played out the other way just fine too. If you know, depending on where you took that, there the other way there isn't as much of like a natural internal conflict or an obvious like foe in the end. Mm-hmm. But that doesn't mean it couldn't have been awesome. Well, yeah, and I feel like it fits more into the legacy of Star Wars because Star Wars, the Force is always at least my interpretation of, of, of Star Wars, that I feel like the force has always been something, a power that's, a, that's more of a calling. But then, of course, in the prequels, they make it part of your DNA, but it's still something that's, that's special that not everybody can just wield. And one of the things I don't really like in this sequel trilogy is I feel like they've made it this, they've kind of, I feel like they made it kind of not only something that anybody can access, but also that uh, that is... It just can do anything. It's just the superpower that can make you, you know, leap through, leap across uh, <laughs> huge divides that it can make you, I don't know, that now you're healing people and we'll talk more about that. Um, I don't know. I just feel like it's, it, was, it was something that was a special calling and power. And then like, I've always thought of it kind of like the war of heaven, you know, or in heaven where, where a certain number of the people that uh, were called or left and turned away and so that's what that was kind of similar to the dark side of the force right Mm -hmm. um and anyway i i feel like her having some kind of legacy makes sense in star wars and i don't think it makes her any less of a feminist character because we all have legacies like we're all from somewhere (laughs) well and like and you have ben whose power came from his mother right and in some very real ways uh, Ray's power came from Leia also as her Jedi master. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't feel like that erased the feminism in Ray's story, but yeah, I mean we have to buy that that uh, that Palpatine uh, that there was a Mrs. Palpatine somewhere. <laughs> Obviously, right? <laughs> so and we don't know which of her parents was Palpatine's child. We don't know if it was her mm-hmm. father or her mother. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I'm not sure about a Mrs. Palpatine. He was vain enough. He may have just uh, created a clone for his son. Oh, and, uh, I didn't even you know, think of that. You know, something like that. That's true. That's interesting. I didn't even think about that. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I, I I did feel like it was, that there maybe was a little bit of face palming. Like, why did we destroy, <laughs> why did we destroy Snoke? Uh, and so they were like, well, I guess we'll bring back Palpatine. People like Palpatine. <laughs> He's a good villain. Uh, but I was fine with it. I thought it was fun. He's, he is really good. Ian McDermott is very fun in, in this role. I love his cackle and I love, uh, and I think that Voldemort is a pretty good comparison. Yeah. And I kind of like it, you know, as they, they only show us the like Snoke's in a bottle uh, very briefly as they're, as they're uh, kind of panning uh, mm-hmm. through the shot. And I, I'm wondering if these were attempts for him to kind of create a body to return to. And, um, you know, that's kind of the best that he could do is basically create a puppet that he could run around, um, you know, but it wasn't really him. Uh, he could mm-hmm. act through Snoke. And so, I don't know. I, I kind of like it. I kind of don't. I'm kind of indifferent. Mm-hmm. So how did you feel about the use of Leia? So, of course, Carrie Fisher passed away in 2016. Uh, and... Uh, they, I had, I thought they did a great job with that personally. I thought, I mean, they used her way more than I was expecting. And, uh, and I thought that it was pretty seamless. I thought they did a really good job. Uh, I don't know. What did you think, Abby? I loved it. Yeah. I loved it. I loved the way they, I think if she had been alive 
to act in this movie, I don't know that they could have brought a better, a better ending to her. Mm-hmm. And I think in some very real, I don't know, I think in a real way, like, this is Leia's story. This is Leia's story. And Leia, I mean, without Leia, none of this works. Yeah. None of this works. Like, she was the impetus that that was instrumental in leading Ben back to the back to mm-hmm. goodness. Because that is also consistent with this whole sequel trilogy because every time Kylo gets the chance to kill his mom, he stops mm-hmm. through the whole series, all three movies. Mm-hmm. And he, he never doesn't feel her presence. And, uh, and so, yeah, I, I really like that. What do you think of how they did it, Jeremy? Uh, I was really impressed. Um, you know, same as Abby. Uh, I thought she was in it a lot more than, than I anticipated. Um, it was pretty seamless. Uh, you know, and then just thinking about it, I was like, you know, we've, we've, we've all seen the bad lip reading videos, you know, the last few years. And, uh, you know, it's like, if they can, if they can do that and, and just completely twist things around, it's like, you know, they actually had some real footage of her saying Star Wars things. So, um, you know, they can do a lot, uh, a lot with uh, footage. So yeah. um, I did think it was really well done, very tasteful and uh, a fitting tribute. Me too. And it, it's nice too, that her daughter was in most of those scenes uh, as uh, one of the um, resistance. So that was, that was kind of nice. And they had her daughter, I think playing her in that one uh, flashback. Oh, is so, that what they did? Yeah. Okay. I wasn't sure about that. Yeah. I really love to like in the original movies, Leia was kind of, you know, just this princess, mm-hmm. this sidekick. Right. Um, and I think Carrie was kind of vocal about, like, <laughs> thinking that was kind of stupid. Well, especially in Return to Jedi when she's wearing the gold bikini and just mm-hmm. stuff like that. It's super, I, like, she she had some pretty, she had some opinions about that. Yeah. And she was right, too. She was right, too. And um, they kind of gave her the opportunity to have the role she always should have had to mm-hmm. be the leader. Yeah. Um, to, to, they kind of were able to write this wrong for her. And I thought that was a really nice. Um, One thing that really I thought. Nice tribute to Carrie. Yeah. It was just really lovely that they did that. I agree. One thing that was a little bit confusing at the end. So she ends up. Uh, she ends up passing away. And usually when a Jedi passes away, they have that force dissolve. Right. Mm-hmm. And yet she didn't. She stayed around for a long time. And I didn't, I guess that was a little bit weird. <laughs> I guess she was just waiting to help he so that her did essence. Dissolve, right? Because the only difference, I, the only one I can think of that didn't dissolve was um, uh, Qui Gon in Phantom Menace. They had to do the fire. But um, so I was, I, that was a little bit weird. But it was a plot convenience to try to, because they wanted her to, to be the one to basically save the day at the end. So that's how they had to do it uh, to inspire Kylo and, or Ben. And I don't know. I was like, Oh, okay. I mean, that's one of those minutia that kids especially don't care about, (laughs) about the, uh, the rules of the Jedi. Yeah. I guess that there is a little bit of precedence. So you have, um, even Luke, Luke, when he was talking to Ray about Leia, he mentioned that she it was before she finished her training, before she became the master that she handed in the lightsaber, um, you know, and then you have the when Anakin is redeemed at the end of uh, Return of the Jedi and his body is, is cremated um, on the pyre and then he appears as a force ghost after that so he didn't have the disappearance but did appear as a force ghost so Mm -hmm. we got to see a little bit of that from leia too so there apparently are times when the body sticks around versus the immediate you know Mm -hmm. poof yeah so uh they have the they go to this one planet that uh uh to find this dagger and uh that will lead them to the wayfinder it doesn't matter all that stuff was whatever it just led them to where they need to go um and uh and there's this whole scene where first of all they meet lando and he helps them and that was one of the first of sort of many cameos and he we see him i think a couple more times but how did a lot of people say oh that's just fan service uh but i enjoyed it i thought that was fun 
I, I liked seeing, like, at the end, probably the most blatant use of fan service is the shot of the Ewoks at the end. <laughs> like, okay, <laughs> you're pushing it here. <laughs> there was no reason that you needed just to have those. But I still enjoyed it. I liked it. <laughs> I don't know. What did you think of all of that kind of stuff? Uh, did you like that, Abby? I didn't care. Like, I liked I liked Lynn. I thought it was fun. Yeah, yeah. sure. Sure, yeah. it was fan service, but who cares? Yeah. Okay, oh, I liked it. <laughs> That's how I felt too. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then we have this whole scene where they have uh, Kylo and Ray are using their force powers to hold this ship that Chewbacca has, has just gone into. We've seen him. And she ends up getting force lightning coming out of her fingers unexpectedly and uh, destroys the ship. But surprise <laughs> Chewbacca is actually not on that ship somehow some way and uh, I don't know what did you think about that whole scene uh, Jeremy and the fake um, it was surprising <clears throat> I guess once we found out her lineage the force lightning made more sense but I felt like it was a little forced because um, it's you know okay why is this coming out like by accident and then it's like well maybe Kylo forced it has he used force lightning? I can't think of him using any of force lightning in his time, but I thought mm -hmm. maybe something of their link, like he kind of like pushed her that way. Um, I just thought it was odd. I thought if you're going to have anything, um, you just kind of have an overwhelming, um, uh, you know, I don't know, something like they did in Last Jedi where the thing kind of exploded because of their dueling wills, you know, something like that. It just It just seemed odd to me. And I felt like, I was glad Chewie didn't die, but I felt like they resolved that too quickly because it yeah. was just like a scene or two later where you're like, oh, oh, there he is. Okay, I'm going to stop crying now because um, you didn't have enough time to stop crying before they showed you he was still alive. Yeah, and I was a little bit, a tiny bit surprised because it's not like Marvel where nobody stays dead in Marvel movies. Uh, in these movies, they've been killing off these these original characters right and left so i was kind of like, oh no chewbacca and then then they bring him back and and uh and then uh so they find the uh they find this dagger and the has this sith language c-3po can't translate the language because he's not allowed to translate anything that's sith and so they have to go to a place where they can erase basically erase C-3PO's memory and uh, and then uh, so it's a place that uh, it's called Kajimi and it's a place that Poe Dameron uh, has been been before has lived before and there was another thing that they totally just ignored about The Last Jedi it was Poe's entire arc in that movie he was basically exactly the same as he was at the end of Force Awakens <laughs> <laughs> and so there you go um but uh yeah so they get there and there is uh this um uh this uh let's find the name of the little creature i forgot to write that down uh i can't find it um there's this cute little creature <laughs> that's there to that has the skills to erase the the memory. I also thought this was a little bit of a fake out because you get this tender scene. Anthony Daniels was really lovely as C-3PO as he usually is. And uh, and they, and then by the end of the movie, he basically has all his memories back. <laughs> so. Yeah, I didn't like that. I felt like it cheapened the sacrifice. Yeah. Um, and sometimes people just need to die for their cause. And mm -hmm. I didn't, you know, I didn't need to kill off 3PO, but the way the story was going, just let it happen and let it, let it stand. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. was 100% sure. I knew for sure he would get his memory back, though, because the only, the only hesitation was like, oh, R2's memory banks aren't super reliable, even though he totally has a backup, like, that did cheapen it, but I also knew it was coming, like, I knew it was cheap from the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, especially once we find out that Chewbacca is, that that was a fake out, I was kind of like, eh. And they even, yeah, they even mentioned that, oh, he can get most of his memory back from r 2 So, yeah. Uh, and uh, you have this woman named Zaril 
that is on this planet that has a uh, a chip that uh, will allow her to get uh, anywhere that she wants. But it seems like nobody has any problem getting anywhere they want in this movie. So I don't understand what was particularly needed about this chip. But but anyway, she ends up giving it to Poe. But I thought that the new characters in this movie were basically wasted. I don't think like I don't think there was anything in Jana, who they meet later, uh, or Jana that that Rose couldn't have done. But people didn't like Rose in Last Jedi, so they didn't use her. Uh, so they brought this new person to help Finn. And uh, and then you have Zorl, who was just you didn't even you, there was no reason to get Carrie Russell to play that part. Like you didn't even see anything but her eyes. You could have gotten an extra. There's yeah, no was reason to have her. Total waste. That was so stupid. Yeah, that was really dumb. So and- the uh, I, I will defend the I'll defend this a little bit only because I finally thinking about it found a reason for all the extra characters. Uh huh. Um, and that was the the end of the movie when you have everybody shows up, you know, and they show that scene, you know, they show that um, all of the uh, good people who just yeah. showed up to fight. Um, and I think that's, that was the point of them kind of picking up people at these different planets, um, who they knew who, who would fight. Um, it was just to show, kind of add a couple of, uh, human points of contact where you, you can, okay, some of the people out in this fleet are the ones who we met. And those are examples of everybody else who happened to show up at the end to fight. And so that's, that was the purpose they served for me was they kind of put a face to some of that fleet that yeah. came at the end. Well, and there were a lot of things in this movie that were pretty corny for me, but I feel like that's actually really true to star Wars in the, you know, in the first star Wars movie, princess Leia comes up to Darth Vader and it's like, smelled you a foul stench. <laughs> you know, like <laughs> it's corny. It's a corny movie. And you, you know, you've got these ridiculous scenes and it's just fun because it's corny. I like it. And <laughs> I so, agree. Like, you can't criticize the new Star Wars for being corny. You can't yeah. do that because every Star Wars ever has been corny. Yeah, I actually found that really refreshing because we've had Rogue One, which kind of lost that, and then we had, uh, and I mean, it had good things about it, but it wasn't corny, very corny. Um, and then you have Last Jedi that kind of lost that too, and uh, Solo had some of that, and so that was nice. Uh, but it had L three, who I hated so much um but uh, but anyway uh so i actually liked that but it was pushing it for me with the whole uh, the whole first order spy that was so dumb <laughs> i hated that oh yeah with, with hawks being the spy i was just like oh that was so stupid <laughs> i mean originally he's basically like hitler in this world he gives this in force awakens he gives this huge speech and this huge crowd and he's he's a uh, and then he's just gotten worse and worse and worse as a character. I, I, I guess, I, I, I think originally they were trying to make him the new Tarkin, but mm. they just didn't know what to do with that character, I feel like. Yeah, that was silly, but it was also like a teeny tiny point in the movie. Yeah, so no, like it's that. fine, but I was just like, oh, give me a break. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, this, I was kind of glad that he was dead. I was like, oh, because I have. Now we don't have to deal with him anymore. Yeah, get rid of him. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, we find out that Ray is Palpatine's granddaughter. There's this extensive scene where they are force connecting Ray and Kylo, uh, and uh, and I thought that was all pretty effective. I think I think that Kylo has been the best character in this series. I, I think the fact that he's the only villain in Star Wars that has had any like fighting with the light and throughout the whole thing, he's always struggled with that. And I think that his payoff is the best. And I think that his character is the best. And I think that him and Daisy Ridley just and driver and Daisy Ridley have such good chemistry. And so pretty much any re- interaction with the two of them, I've really liked in all of the movies. I don't know if you do you agree with that, Abby? Um Yeah, I agree with that. Um I guess I'm a little annoyed that his character was so much better developed than Daisy's. Yeah. Um 
that felt kind of stupid to me. I feel like they were a little scared uh, because I, I like in the original in the original Force Awakens, I gave it a I gave all the people were saying, oh, she is a Mary Sue, all this stuff, and I and I discredited that because I just assumed they would develop her more. In well, three we movies. did get an explanation for why she's so powerful, at least. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But um, I don't know. I feel like they were scared of making her a, complex, a more complex character. Yeah, I uh, agree. They could have yeah. done more with her and they should have. Like, mm-hmm. her, her story is, like, I don't know, probably the biggest, biggest letdown of all of their character arcs. Mm-hmm. Well, and what he benefited from was his character arc was continued through Last Jedi and continued to build through all three, um, where hers just didn't do anything in the yeah. second movie and then had to be kind of tied up in the third. So it, it makes sense to me that his is his is the one that has the most meaning. Um, we take it from when you absolutely hate his guts when he kills Han, um, you know, and you continue through the progression and you see him you know, overtake Snoke and you're like, oh, maybe, you know, maybe this is the time and he, and he doesn't kill his mom. And, you know, um, you're thinking, okay, you know, maybe he does come toward the light and you have that hope. Um, and that just continues into the last one. And finally he, you know, in uh, last Jedi, Snoke also just kind of ridicules him. Um, and so kind of uh, shaking his foundation a bit. And I feel like coming into uh, rise of Skywalker when, uh, Palpatine reveals, yeah, basically it's just been me this whole time. Um, that's again further eroding this whole thing. Like, well, wait a minute, well, this was all just you know a setup. You know, this wasn't real. Um, and then finally, the reconnection with his uh, his mom. You know, like you know, Leia is like purging you know the evil from him. Um, and then he gets to have the um, episode with his dad. I, I, I just love the, the arc and the growth um, with him throughout. Yeah, me too. The, I think the, the moment with Han where he's remembering mm-hmm. is super, super powerful because Han's death in The Force Awakens is like one of the most powerful moments of this entire trilogy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think that that's essential, that moment, to the story working, because he killed Han Solo, one of the greatest characters in the history of Star Wars, Kylo did. And in order for us to buy his redemption, we kind of have to have Han there saying, okay, we kind of have to have him there giving his blessing on the whole thing. And otherwise, I don't think it would work. Well, he needed to, like, process some level of, like, remorse yeah and repentance for that moment in order for us to buy his redemption Mm -hmm. yeah and i think we just needed physically to see han solo there saying i basically i forgive you oh that was so beautiful i was was so i was so happy they brought back harrison ford and just like seeing him in the flesh like that was so meaningful yeah and that's that's when they get to this planet called Kefbeer, and or Kylo and Ray have this huge duel, uh, and on this uh, surrounded by all of this water and everything, and uh, I think that uh, that that whole scene really works very well. Uh, but this is a, a a deep dive question. But so Han Solo is not a Jedi. And so he can't be a force ghost, but they make him kind of a memory, which is kind of funny because this was written by Chris Terrio, who wrote Batman v Superman. (laughs) And there's almost an identical scene with Clark Kent talking to his dad. (laughs) It's also a memory. (laughs) I'm just like, oh, that's weird. Uh, But, uh, but uh, is that a thing talking to memories in? That was sort of, because at first I was like, oh, is he a force ghost? But I'm like, no, he's not a Jedi. <laughs> I don't know. It was interesting to me. Well, I think it was more like a force projection of Kylo's yeah. memory is how I read it. Uh-huh. Like, yeah. yeah, I mean, I mean, Kylo, Kylo is, he's, he's, he can use the force. He's a force user. 
very strong one. So I would say that he could um, have, I think, yeah, Abby, I think your idea of like a force projection type thing where his, his memories could manifest as a person. Um, I, I buy that. So how did you feel about Finn in this movie? Because one of the criticisms of The Last Jedi is that Finn was just on a wild goose chase the whole time. And he wasn't really used in an effective way. Uh, and, uh, and so in this movie, he uh, is, is kind of uh, just sort of a worrier for, for Ray because they have that connection. And uh, then he, he's just sort of sent all these little missions and I don't know. How did you feel about, I thought it was fun. I enjoyed it, but um, I, what did you think Jeremy about Finn? I didn't mind it. Um, yeah. Last Jedi has its problems with the slow chase and the casino arc and yeah. all that stuff. Uh, it was just, I don't know, not, not enough story for me, but uh, Finn, I was fine within this movie. Um, again, he, he has this weird continuity problem um, going to Last Jedi and then here um, because you have throughout this movie, it's it's hinting at him being force sensitive, which, you know, kind of tags back to Force Awakens when he's able to um, wield the lightsaber and fight Kylo for, you know, a reasonable amount of mm -hmm. time that somebody who doesn't have the force, you would think, you know, would be instantly over. That's a good point. Um, so I think I think you've got enough there. It's just it's just weird to have it kind of resurface and now like throughout the movie you're getting these hints of oh he can feel things just like just like Leia could could tell when things were happening from far away. Now Finn can do that too, and it's just oh here new thing. Yeah. So uh, also on Kef Beer as they're doing their duel before uh, before with the Han Solo part. Uh, so there he hears the voice of his mom and uh and then uh ray uh stabs him with the lightsaber right and uh so he's gonna die and uh and then uh ray he ray heals him uh with the force and evidently from what i've been reading that's like a thing in uh, I, I don't remember it in Rebels, but I guess it's in Rebels. But this has never been a thing in the movies. Um, yeah, it's also in the Mandalorian. Oh, is it? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah. Oh, go ahead. You can. No, I was gonna say uh, I I was fine with it because I uh, I I just feel like such a connection between these two characters that I believe I guess that a healing could happen. Um, and I, I feel like Leia was also kind of involved earlier too. What's that? She did it with the big weird snake creature earlier. Oh too. yeah, that's true. Yeah. And I think again, the, the movie does a really good job of setting you up with examples of, Hey, here's something that's going to come later um, where she heals the mm -hmm. snake and is like, hmm, I bet she heals something else, you know, later. Yeah. Um, what's interesting, you take in all the force powers that are being used. And I feel like, and also the storyline with Palpatine coming back. And, um, you know, there were a lot of people at the end of Solo didn't, didn't like Maul, you know, showing up out of, seemingly out of the blue. And I think you've just got to take the larger Star Wars universe um, and say, you know, you need to be uh, accepting what's going on in the animated series, what's going mm -hmm. on in the video games. All of these are playing, you know, what's going on in books and comics. Um, these are, these are all uh, themes that are out there. Um, every Star Wars video game I've ever played has had healing as a force ability, mm -hmm. you know, for example, and this has been, you know, 20 years, you know, of video games that where you can heal because of the force. I, I feel like also the, they're a dyad in the force right thing, making them extra powerful covers a lot of sins yeah <laughs> yeah that's true and i mean this is a it's an adventure like there's going to be stuff that doesn't necessarily all fit everything i i i think i there's always in any adventure story there's always going to be some plot holes some conveniences some MacGuffins, some that's just that's just the way it is. That's the nature of a fantasy story. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I did remember saying in when we talked about Last Jedi, saying that because I'd always debated: is this series is it science fiction or is it fantasy? And I think that these, the sequel trilogy has been 
like squarely fantasy uh, <laughs> series, um, which is fine. It's just, uh, it's just been different. So, uh, and so anyway, that all was, I think pretty effective. And you see, uh, you see Kylo throw his, his uh, lightsaber into the ocean and uh, he, you know, he's now he is, he's no longer Kylo. He has been solo. And uh, so that is his redemption. And uh, I, I liked it. I thought it was good. And oh, so let then, me, let I'm me sorry. throw in, I really appreciated in his exchange with Han um, where he, he kind of breaks down and says, dad, and, you know, he's about to say, you know, I'm sorry, I love you, something like that. And Han just breaks him off and says, I know. And so I just love the callback to Empire and, you know, just, it, and it's just Han. Well, and, and there was also a callback in Kylo saying, I know what I have to do, but I don't know if I have the strength to do it. Which, of course, in Force Awakens, that was a, a sign that he was going to kill him and be more dark. But now this is him. And he doesn't know if he has the strength to, to, to be good. And that so that was nice. Handled so beautifully. Like mm-hmm. it really strongly echoed that first exchange. Yeah. I liked that too. And, 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 and maybe what it, what it could have been or should have been, you know, that, that was him making it right. Mm-hmm. Yes. And so then Ray goes to Octu, which is the Island that Luke was on. Uh, and in the last Jedi, and uh, she burns down her ship. She's going to stay there. She's going to follow Luke's example. And this is when we get the. Uh, she's going to throw the the lightsaber, just like uh, just like uh, Luke had done in the last Jedi. And then Luke's Force Ghost is there to catch the lightsaber, and he says, uh, "This is a, a weapon that should be treated with respect." and and then uh he said she says i just want to i just want to hide i'm too powerful i'm too whatever and he says well i was wrong i'm sorry (laughs) i don't know i just felt like that was that was to a lot of fans that was uh uh because i mean you had in luke Luke Skywalker, in my opinion, one of the most loyal characters in the history of cinema that, uh, that he left being trained by Yoda to help his friends, even when he wasn't fully trained and he was going to, into peril. And then you had, he found good in Darth Vader and for him to all of a sudden be on this Island for so long. And, and he evidently could just project onto another planet and help his friends if he wanted to and he never did and he saw them getting killed and hurt and i just that was very difficult for me to buy that the same character and i'm sure there's like books and other stuff to explain his his tra- trajectory to get to that point but i didn't i didn't like it i didn't like it at all in fact there was a side of me that was like yes <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, really I remember uh, when we were walking to the car afterward. I I told I was telling Abby about that scene, and I was like, "Yeah, they they really just trolled the Last Jedi." <laughs> <laughs> they really did. I was just kind of like, "What?" Uh, I don't know. I think it was like I didn't think it was that big of a deal, but yeah, I mean, especially that 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 lightsaber at the very least. That lightsaber scene was so pointed to the exact same scene in The Last Jedi that I felt like, at the very least, they were poking fun at that scene. At the very yeah. least. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, anyway. Uh, so, she decides that, well, she finds Leia's lightsaber there. And she gets that. And uh, so, she has Luke and Leia's lightsaber. And then she decides to go to Exegol with Lay's lightsaber in Luke's X-wing and that he, he uh, gets from the water. And then, uh, and then uh, R2D2 restores C-3PO's memory. Like we all knew he would. And uh, I really did love the theme. This was so classic star Wars to me, the whole theme that the, res- the, the first order wants the resistance to think that they are alone. And, uh, and so that's kind of what Poe Dameron, you know, leans onto that, that, uh, we are, 
they, that they want you to, they want you to believe that we're not alone, but there are good people everywhere who are willing to fight. And, uh, and so they, they go to try to fight the, um, the first order. And you do have a scene where a, uh, a, a first order, um, battleship uh i forget what they're called but anyway that that it destroys the whole planet of uh kajimi even though it's not a death star like the whole reason they built the death star was to have the power to destroy planets uh-huh. and and now just like a regular ship evidently can destroy a whole planet and and there is a really funny comedy routine out there that like <laughs> that this is you know for kids we just destroy planets in every star wars <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's not enough it starts with one and then and then by force awakens there's like five i think planets that are destroyed yeah it's like the carnage <laughs> in the series but yeah they destroy a planet they destroy kajimi <laughs> i guess which was interesting and uh and then uh so uh, there, then there's this really fun, I thought, uh, space battle between the resistance and the battle, the battleships. I know I should know their names. I'm blanking, the but uh, I, I thought that that all worked pretty well. And uh, you have Finn and Jana who are on the main Death Star ship uh, that uh, that are uh, trying to destroy the navigation on there uh, and uh, take out that. Uh, fleet and i just thought it was such a satisfying scene when i when poe dameron rises up and he sees all of the of the that was a that was a great moment it was really fun yeah yeah because i that is one funny thing especially in the prequels you notice it because you have all of these governmental bodies and yet they never show a lot they never show sort of the people that they're ruling right you know what i mean right. it's all just the government but you never see like people but right protesting there's obviously or... a whole bunch of people yeah or you know whatever space people yeah and i am surprised that jj didn't involve uh the little boys at the end of last jedi at least a little bit because i thought that was one of the nicer moments of the last jedi is it ending with these two boys uh, that are inspired by the resistance right. playing Right. And that would have been kind of a nice tie, I think, and seems very JJ to me to have this like kids sure. inspired. I liked the literal um, cavalry, mm-hmm. like yeah. they had actual like horse-like creatures. That yeah, they were on. that was pretty cool, and it was a way to like subvert, you know, the whatever system they used to track. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's Steer. true. I like that too. And so then you end up this whole scene where Kyle or Ben and Ray are kind of alternately fighting against Palpatine. And at one point he's uh, that uh, Ben, Ben defeats all of the Knights of Ren and they were kind of wasted in this trilogy, <laughs> the whole idea of the Knights of Ren. Um, and, uh, and so he defeats them. And then at a certain point, uh, then, Palpatine kind of throws him across the room and he's then he has to come back and uh he tells Palpatine tells Rey that if if she kills him then she will become she'll have all the power of all the Sith and all the Jedi and she will be able to rule and reign and uh so uh, and then he has this um force lightning that goes all the way into the sky and takes is is hurting all of the ships the the resistance ships and i don't know this was very over the top but i enjoyed it <laughs> i liked it it was cool it looked good yeah. on screen it was exciting i dug it yeah and ian mcdermott i just like his cackle and i like him as the emperor and uh and uh you have at least a little bit of a conflict for ray of like what is she going to do because she's angry with him how's she going to defeat this guy and uh so i don't know it worked for me as classic adventure yeah i i uh i don't like the device of them being able to say well if you kill me then you're going to replace me um or like you know if you well if you strike in anger then you're going to be then you're going to be bad you think that 
Jedi in the Clone Wars weren't ever angry when they killed somebody who they were fighting. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, you had, you know, hundreds of Jedi at least. And, uh, you know, it's not like every time they go out and kill somebody that they're taking on these evil attributes and become a Sith. And I get that, you know, Palpatine is a little bit different, but I just don't see, I don't, I don't understand how you would have this, uh, you know, all of a sudden, okay, you're going to be this evil person because you killed an evil person. Yeah. Um, even if you did it when you were angry versus, you know, what, what emotion are you going to take into a fight? <laughs> you know? yeah. It seems so, like just a really convenient way to draw out the, the ending battle. Yeah, there's no yeah. doubt about that. <laughs> I, I did really appreciate, though, that, that really, like, she finished the battle that um, – that originally would have killed Palpatine, you know, when he's facing Windu and Windu is bearing down on him in episode three and uh, Anakin ends up interrupting it, but he's going to die from his own force lightning being rebounded on him um, against Windu. And so I really appreciated that his ultimate demise came in that same way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, you have, uh, I thought a nice moment where Ray uh, gets help from the the force ghosts of the past. It was totally fan service, but I enjoyed it. I liked it. Um, you have Yoda there. You have uh, you know Luke there. You have all these different. And uh, I thought that that was really nice. And uh, so then you have the scene where he's he's and and it is kind of funny because you think Palpatine would sort of learn that maybe the Force Lightning isn't the best way to deal with problems after <laughs> the original trilogy. I mean, the prequel trilogy. Uh, and uh, and anyway, and so but you get the scene where she uses first one lightsaber, Leia's lightsaber, and then the second lightsaber, which is Luke's lightsaber, and uh, and the that's the power that is able to thrust it back at him and then he uh so he basically ends up sort of killing himself with his own crazy force lightning and <laughs> but in doing so it it drains all of the energy off of ray and she ends up dying and uh and so then uh ben finds her and he is able to now revive her with the force and i guess i that has never been a thing that people have been able to resurrect each other with the no force. but they're able to heal each other so given that she was so recently dead mm -hmm. it kind of made sense to me i i i saw it as him using that healing power to more resuscitate kind of right yeah yeah, yeah and and you know he he the way they described it was um, I think I can't remember who Ray described it when she first healed the uh, snake monster, I think, where she says, you know, I transferred some of my force into it. And, right. and then later in the know, movie, she was like shaking out that hand that she used, like yeah. some of her. And, and then and then she face. healed Kylo uh later when when she stabbed him and it, i mean clearly the wound was grievous enough it was the same wound that han had and when he died so had she not healed kylo he probably dies out there um and so she would have had to transfer quite a bit of power at that time so uh, i think in a way it's just kind of rebalancing you've been shown that this amount of power can be transferred um you'd almost say she was just as gone as leia was when she kind of came to out in space and brought herself, you know, back in, um, mm -hmm. you know, whether she's unconscious or, um, or actually dead, you know, I don't know, but i um, close enough that Kylo did have to get, or Ben at that point had to give up uh, most of his life force or all of it to make her live. Yeah. So he does that. And, uh, and then they have their kiss. So Raylo fans were all happy as I, I didn't, was. I didn't need that. You I was kind of annoyed it. by it. I get the thumbs down from me. <laughs> I've heard that from actually a number of people. What did you think, Jeremy? Of the kiss? I, I didn't need it. I'm solidly here, I, <laughs> you know, but I was never a Raylo fan. Um, so I'm, 
I'm yeah. uh, I'm fine. I guess it's a Ray Ban now. <laughs> um, I mean, but big no. shocker! I liked the over the top romantic moment. <laughs> you know what though? I really liked their connection. Yeah. I just didn't need it to be romantic. Yeah, I didn't need to kiss. I like I'd be fine if they went on and had a relationship after this, but I didn't need a kiss in this scene. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I didn't. Yeah, I can. I'm not I can... mad about it. I'm not angry about it. I'll be clear there. <laughs> But I'm not like I did not need that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I, I would say too. Uh, you mentioned the um, different uh, Jedi who kind of uh, talked to Rey and like to get her to rise, and uh, they did have a couple of other kind of cameo voices from Rebels, which I appreciated. Mm-hmm. They had Ezra, um, Ahsoka, uh, Ahsoka, um, and Kanan. I think were all. Uh, different voices that that spoke to her, so I thought that was kind of a neat nod mm-hmm. to the animated series. I wish I didn't Leia's notice that voice had featured a little more prominently in that. But whose voice? Leia's. Oh yeah, yeah. I I because I was looking for that. I didn't notice it the first time because I've seen it now twice. And uh and but then I saw on Tara Strong's in, uh, on her uh Twitter. She's just like, oh, I gotta be have a small part in this this uh, Star Wars, and I was like what she did (laughs) so then i noticed it the second time (laughs) so yeah that was really cool i still think that in my opinion i still think star wars rebels is the best of disney star wars i i just love that show i thought it was so good and they did show the uh the ghost was one of the ships that showed up oh Um, really yeah also the ship from the mandalorian uh showed up in the fleet too oh that's cool kind of neat little shout outs yeah that's fun uh, and so then we have uh, that Ben ends up dying and he force dissolves like a Jedi. Do you feel like that was earned? Was he redeemed enough to get the same death of, you know, Obi-Wan and Luke and all of that? I think it's been made pretty clear in the past, doesn't it? That like, I don't know. Once you're redeemed, you're redeemed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I guess I guess it kind of comes down to your heart like in in his heart was he truly going to go back on on the change and the way you know the first on first watch which is all I've had I've only I've only seen it the one time so far yeah um but on first watch I'd say I was a little bit you know wondering like okay what did Leia just do when she died um and then I heard or read somewhere that she was purging the evil from him um with with what she did and to me like between that and then the conversation with han it does feel very final that that he is he is truly turned and this is the last time like he's made his decision um and i think that that's the biggest testament to him turning to the light for the last time is that he did kind of have the uh force ghost dissolve yeah yeah i I think so too he gave his life for the co- for the rebel cause like mm-hmm. he he did something really selfless and good like you can't mm-hmm. yeah. top that right That's he true. didn't have to he didn't have to do that he could have let her go he could have ruled the galaxy at that point he could have just been good ben um right. and you know he didn't have to do anything I was just glad because I would have personally been very irritated if we had ended a nine episode arc about a family and the Skywalker family and have it end with the, the the last Skywalker being the, you know, the Supreme leader, I would have been really annoyed by that. And so I was glad (laughs) it was good to me. uh, And he, he did kill a lot of people, but I think it's been, I feel like if, if Darth Vader, if Anakin, who literally killed children by the masses, if he's redeemed just from helping his son, (laughs) I feel like it's not that big of a stretch to redeem Kylo. Yeah, it seems like in the Star Wars um, mythos, the, the idea is where's your heart when you die? Um, It's not about a sum of good and evil acts, but where, where is it when you died? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, then the last thing that we get is we have Ray going, everybody celebrating. Like I said, we get that kind of ridiculous Ewok scene. Although I did find out that I guess, uh, cause Warwick Davis, he played 
the uh, when he was very young, he played uh, one of the um, the Ewoks, and I found out that his son, I guess, was playing the other one that's in the scene, which is kind of fun. Oh, oh that's fun. Yeah, <laughs> but anyway, and uh, so everybody's celebrating, and so Ray goes back to Tatooine. Uh, and we see sort of it's very similar of course even the red sun and everything from the opening of the first star wars and she buries both luke and leia's lightsaber she has her own new lightsaber and an old woman comes by and says oh there's nobody been here for so long and uh what what uh what's your name girl or whatever she says something like that and she says she stands up and she says i am ray skywalker so what did you think about that jeremy um, you know, I, I liked that she had uh, Luke and Leia kind of looking on, and it feels right. It feels like this is her adopted heritage, um, kind of like a spiritual, um, you know, godparent, maybe. Yeah. Um, you know, these are her spiritual parents, uh, if you will, in the Force and, and her training. So I like it. Um, you know, instead of Ray from nowhere, it's, it's Ray Skywalker. It did have a little bit of the vibe from Solo. Um, when he's being asked, you know, what, what's your family name? And, you know, I, I, yeah. I don't have one. Oh, solo, you know, yeah. so, oh, uh, a <laughs> little bit of that, but, um, I, I appreciated it. I, I like it. Yeah. Well, what did you think, Abby? Uh, I liked it. There was kind of that moment when the lady's like, well, what's your family name? And you kind of, you know, she has to cho- choose. And I like that idea of like, uh, it carried through, too, because, um, like, the Skywalkers are her chosen family. And there was this big feeling of chosen family in this movie throughout. Mm-hmm. One of the things I really liked uh, was, like, the Finn and Poe bromance. That was that was really cute. I, I yeah. dug that. And just, like, this really sense of community between... Uh, like all of our main characters it's like they know each other they love each other it's like kind of this yeah this family and so I kind of liked that they 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 gave her this chance to choose her family yeah yeah I liked that too and that was definitely a theme through this trilogy which I enjoyed that uh the um uh, I may have not loved the fact that they diluted the force so much to me, but I do like that, that sort of theme of that anybody can be, that anybody's of value can be powerful, can, can, uh, can do an important work is so that it's not just the, uh, the Skywalkers, you know, that are important. Uh, so I did, I did like, I liked that theme in the in I thought it was a fun moment. I enjoyed it. I uh, with her doing that. To me it was it was it was close to being the cringing moment at the end of uh, Revenge of the Sith with the no. But I thought they it was just okay. I'm like, okay, I can I can take it. It'll be good. It's the end of a nine episode arc. I'm fine. Um I forgot to mention, we should probably mention that uh, so there's all this celebrating uh, at the base, and you see uh, Chewie getting a medal, which was very yeah, like that Chewie. a lot. <laughs> that, was really cool. <laughs> that was really good. And then also, there's been much talk about the first uh, a gay uh, kiss in Star Wars, same-sex kiss with this lesbian couple who we haven't met at all. I guess they have names, and I just think that. I mean, I would call Disney out on this because you do not get pro- progressive points for 30 seconds, maybe not even that long of, <laughs> of affection from a, a same sex couple. Like that's not good enough. Like you, I, it just, it's kind of irritating to me. They do the same thing with the beauty and the beast, you know, that it's like, yeah, that was so cheap. Supposedly- but with beauty and the beast, I felt like there was all this publicity about it. Like, yeah. Oh, there's going to be this a gay moment, gay moment. But I didn't see her. I didn't see her hear any publicity about a gay moment in this. Mm-hmm. I didn't even know about it until I saw it. I was like, Oh yeah. Okay. It was definitely less, uh, like you didn't see JJ kind of touting it. I've mm-hmm. seen it. Uh, I've seen it a little bit, but, uh, you know, you don't get progressive points. No, for for something like this, I'm yeah, sorry. I didn't have a problem with it because I didn't see any fishing for progressive yeah. points. 
But if they were fishing for pro- progressive points based on that, then that's <laughs> yeah. like so it, ridiculous. If the latest Lifetime Christmas movie has more, <laughs> more affection and more, then that doesn't count. You don't get it. No. Uh, oh. So, yeah. I, that was, I mean, if it meant something to people, then that's fine. But I, I, I think we need to stop congratulating Disney for doing stuff like that. Like, no. Right. <laughs> It doesn't right. count. And, uh, make Paul so. and Finn a, a romance. Like, yeah. make that up a notch. If you a lot of people were upset about that. Because yeah. <laughs> like. it looked, there's even a quote floating around with Oscar Isaac saying that he thinks it totally would have made sense. And But the uh, the overlords at Disney were not willing to go there. So, Right. Yeah. So, anyway. It's a, you know, it's a big thing because in China they, they won't... Uh, they just won't approve movies with uh you know so it puts movies like uh the want to that want to be progressive it puts them in a tough place because they lose all of that approve this movie or do they cut out the scene for the check i'm pretty sure they cut it out yeah um and same thing with the middle east but especially china because that's such a i mean china has never been a huge uh money maker for star wars but nevertheless <laughs> money is money you know at what point do you say okay that's fine you don't have to see our movies <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's fine we don't want your dollars but disney yeah. is never going to tell anybody that they don't want their dollars yeah they're never so, going to do that anyway and, and it's not just disney same thing happened with harry potter too mm-hmm. so you know you get the hand touch in <laughs> crimes of grindelwald <laughs> Ooh, that was daring <laughs> um so anyway but uh so that was the end but i did like chewy getting his medals <laughs> well and i what i interpreted it as because that was Moss who was giving it to him i i believe that was han's medal that he was being given because it looked exactly like the ones from a new hope so i think mm, it was yeah that makes sense i was thinking it was it did look exactly like that though so that was nice and uh uh, so yeah, we didn't end up losing any of our, I mean, except for, except for Leia, I guess, uh, any, I thought for sure we, we were going to lose Chewie we or somebody. <laughs> so I was kind of glad. Woo. <laughs> um, I'm kind of annoyed. I really love Chewie. Um, and I'm kind of annoyed that they toyed with my emotions that way. Yeah, I can see that. I can see that. I know. Who doesn't love Chewie? Come on. He's so great. Uh, and I thought they might because, you know, they have a new actor um playing uh chewbacca in these because uh, uh, peter mayhew passed away uh mm-hmm. since um last jedi and i think that the other guy jonas uh i think that he uh was also playing him in the last jedi because of his bad health peter's bad health but anyway uh so you know they just love killing off these original characters in these movies so i thought we would lose more there'd be more carnage uh right. but anyway i, I went into this that. movie uh just trusting JJ and I feel like he basically gave me what I wanted. He had an impossible task before him to try to make all these people happy, try to make something that would be satisfying for this trilogy and also satisfying for nine movies. It is definitely flawed. It's not perfect, but I was entertained watching it. It had enough cheer, enough moments where I wanted to cheer, which is my sort of litmus test for star Wars. How many times do I want to be like, yeah, woohoo. And some people might think that's shallow, but it's, it's, it's what Star Wars has always been for me. And let's be real. So, Star Wars isn't that deep. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it's really let's not. stop pretending that it is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we did it. We have reviewed every Star Wars film. We don't know when there's going to be a new one. It's going to, there's going to be a break. Uh, this is so. definitely hints. Mm-hmm. In that last one, in the, with like the whole Lando and what's her face, yeah, <laughs> about searching for her family. There's some hints of like Finn being force sensitive, and also that pack of people from that with the horses, um, the other defectors mm. being force sensitive. Like, there's JJ did a good job of planting some seeds of directions that they could go if they, they wanted. Yeah, that could be interesting, but it's going to be a while. There was going to be Benioff and, and I think Wise, the people behind Game of Thrones, they were going to do a trilogy. Now they're not. Uh, and like they just keep going through people in Star Wars. Yeah. Um, supposedly Ryan Johnson's going to make a trilogy, uh, which I agree with you, Jeremy, that 
at least in that case, he would have the full vision. So it would be more interesting to me. Uh, and, but frankly, I don't know why he would want to do it. I mean, after all he's been through <laughs> with these, <laughs> with his, I, I wouldn't want to do it and how great everybody received knives out. And I would just make much more detective movies. People seem to like it. <laughs> more yeah. What I, what I, I do really appreciate about last Jedi is he, he took from, from what I could see, he took every main character and said, what, what is the biggest challenge that they could face? You know, and so you take Poe uh, just as an example, and he, you know, he faces. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm the pilot. I'm, I'm the guy who's going to go out and I solve things with my blaster, and that, you know, that blew up in his face. So how does he, how does he cope with that? Mm -hmm. You know, how does, how does Ray cope with finding Luke, and then having, you know, every expectation she had of him helping is completely, you know, kind of tossed you yeah. know, to the wind. And so it's like, how do these characters deal with, with, uh, you know, what, what's that greatest test that they can go with? And I really appreciated kind of that, the angle that he went with there. Um, and again, just as a trilogy, this, this didn't work for me. Um, but I think again, if, if somebody had reign of all three movies, it would be yeah. fine. Um, overall, um, I actually, so, you know, I have my spreadsheet. Um, and so I, I put in the numbers for Rise of Skywalker. Um, it came out as eighth out of 11 um, Star Wars movies, mm -hmm. but it did have kind of, I have this healthy gap between the bottom three are Solo, Phantom Menace, and Attack of the Clones. Um, and so Rise of Skywalker was just a half a point below Return of the Jedi. And so you can see there, there's, a, there's a gap there because that is not a bad movie at all. Um, so it was solid. Um, and really no complaints, but it's not, it's not near the top. He had a lot of things to pull together, to wrap together. I'm not surprised that it's not doing well with critics generally. Um, fans, I think again, going in as a fan, it feels a lot, it feels great because you're getting all, you know, a lot of these answers, you're wrapping up loose ends. It's going to feel good at the end. Um, it was missing some of the highs and lows for me. Um, you know, Force Awakens was amazing. It's my favorite movie. It made me laugh. It made me cry. It made me cheer. Um, that first watch and this one really didn't get me to any of those. Um, Abby did cry all the way through. Um, <laughs> <Don't tell. laughs> Sorry. Um, but I, uh, yeah, I just didn't quite get there with any of it. And I don't know mm -hmm. if I was just, you know, not in the right mind mindset to, to watch it, but it really didn't uh, pull me in em emotionally like I thought it would. Yeah. I mean, I basically agree with you. I haven't done my ranking yet. I did kind of a, a, a tier <laughs> where I had uh, all of the, and I put this uh, in the same uh, league with, um, uh, with, I put it in the same league with Return of the Jedi, uh, but uh, just as far as watchability, or no, not Return of the Jedi, Revenge of the Sith, I put this on the same tier of like flawed, but watchable <laughs> uh, and fun uh, or interesting or captivating in some way. But uh, what I, I said, I, I did this whole thread on Twitter and uh, my main kind of conclusion was that I, that I said, the, I said, that said, I don't think this Disney Star Wars will be remembered fondly because they lacked the plan for our heroes and villains, so you didn't get as attached as our original group. But by then, a new trilogy will have taken its place and we have all moved on. Still, I'm grateful they existed because watching Force Awakens was an incredible experience at the movies. I wouldn't trade that for anything. I wish the following movies had lived up to that excitement, but I'm still glad I had it. The end. <laughs> That's yeah yeah i'm not mad about it like um i really had fun with this movie i really liked it um i yeah. hope if there's one takeaway for disney after this trilogy it's that if you're going to have a set of movies like a trilogy you need to have a cohesive plan for the plot from the outset yeah Yep, you do. And you can have individual directors that add their flair, add their color, add their humor, all that kind of stuff. But you need to have a core plan. And yeah. I mean, that's like I said, that's the thing that Kevin Feige has just managed to do amazingly in the MCU. And he had a firm role. Like Edward Wright was not going to play in his game, in his, in his plan. He's gone. 
He's not going to, and that's what you, that's what a leader has to do. The leader has to make a plan and he has to, you know, stick to that plan. And some people think that's boring, but I think that, uh, that you just make individual movies then. <laughs> if that's what you, if that's what you want right. to do, then make individual movies. You can't have it all these, you can't just be flinging things at the wall, hoping they stick. It just doesn't, it's not satisfying. It's frustrating. Uh, but still it was fun and it was certainly fun to review all these with you. It's been crazy. I mean, I think we started in, yeah, 2015. When we first <laughs> was it really 2015 yeah. when we started this business yeah so four That's years <laughs> pretty crazy so anyway well thank you guys so much this is so much fun i hope you have a great christmas and do you have any social media or anything you want to share um i can be found on twitter and instagram at abby underscore kid great and i'm on twitter at jeremy underscore kid Great. Yeah. And you can find me at Rate Social Reviews, all of our social media, iTunes, YouTube, and on Rotten Tomatoes. Who would ever have thought I'd be able to say that when we first started this whole thing? That's <laughs> crazy. Uh, but yeah, you can find all of my star, all of our Star Wars content in the Star Wars playlist. I'll put a link to that uh, in the notes as well. And uh, thanks again, you guys. I really appreciate it. And let us know your thoughts of all the different things that we talked about. We'd love to hear either on Twitter or in the comments section. That would be really fun. And uh, thanks again. And we will, uh, yeah, who knows when we'll be able to talk about more Star Wars in the future. (laughs) Bye.